Horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, man dashing across the plains was hotly pursued by four brightly painted savages who were armed with short bows. Come on, there. Come on, brother. Get up! It was the Lone Ranger racing for his life, and it seemed like a hopeless race. He rode the half-wild Indian Mustang bareback and wished fervently that he had his great horse, Silver, who might easily have outrun the murder-bent pursuers. He turned and threw two shots over his shoulder. And then his guns were empty. He started to reload while riding the plunging Mustang. The Indians were cutting down his lead. He heard their savage cries and knew that capture was a matter of seconds. If the end must come, he would at least die fighting. He reined up sharply. Ho, ho, ho! Leaping to the ground, the masked man tried desperately to load a gun in the scant seconds that remained. Then help came from an unexpected source. Shots rang out from beyond the underbrush that rimmed a nearby gully. The Indians halted and cried out in surprise. The reprieve was all the masked man needed to thumb cartridges into one of his heavy guns. Then he, too, opened fire. Oh, that did it. Thanks for the help. Did you come out so I can see you? I'm coming, mister. Could have had me in a few seconds if you hadn't opened fire. I could see that. I did Mask, huh? Yes, but It's I all might... right with me, mister, as long as you're not a rancher. And I take it you're not. No, I'm not a rancher. I sure admire the way you rode that Mustang. Bareback at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I can't say much for your shooting. You let all four of those redskins get away. Well, what about yourself? Me? I'm a farmer. I'm more at home with a plow than I am with a rifle. But you look like a man that ought to... Well, I wouldn't expect you to miss at such close range. I fired over their heads. I didn't want to kill those Indians. Why not? Because the Indians will attack soon enough as it is. Killing a couple of them might bring the attack before the people south of here can be warned. Warned? Yes. An attack is coming and very soon. How do you know? Well, Indians have been migrating from all over the territory. They're assembling in a valley north of here. They're going to go on the warpath. You know this for a fact? I saw them. You did, huh? How was it you're riding a horse like that in bareback? <laughs> well, I left my own horse in a camp quite a distance from here and traveled on foot all night so I could scout those Indians with less chance of being discovered. Looks like you were discovered anyway. I was lying on a ridge overlooking the valley. Five Indians closed in on me. 
I managed to fight my way to one of their Mustangs. You must have had quite a fight. Now, let me see. There's a cut on your chin, one on your ear. Your shirt is torn. A tomahawk missed me by a fraction of an inch. Mister, you'd better come back to my place and let Mary wash those cuts. Oh, they'll be all right. You sure those Indians are going to attack the settlers? I think so. How soon? They'll wait till they're joined by other Indians. Oh, it may be a week, possibly two weeks. And I reckon we won't need to worry about the Indians. How's that? We'll be licked by the cattlemen before the Indians get to us. What do you mean? Uh, the same old story, mister. The cattlemen don't like nesters. They resent the fact that we've homesteaded and fenced ground they used to use for range. That's the reason I was up here today with my rifle, when I should have been back at the farm cultivating my crops. Well, what do you mean? Food. Oh. The store in town won't sell anything to farmers. If we want to eat, we've got to hunt. Doggone it, as you saw, I'm no hand with a rifle. I can hardly hit the broadside of a barn, let alone pick off something like that wild turkey over yonder. Well, perhaps I can help. You got him. A great day, mister. You drilled that critter neat and with a six-gun. <laughs> oh, if Mary and I could have you around, I reckon we wouldn't go hungry. <laughs> go get your turkey. Mine? <laughs> well, a small return for saving my life. Look here, mister. I don't care who you are or what you are. You're all right with me. My name's Tom Hanford. Glad to know you, Tom. You know, uh, I'd like to hear more about the trouble with the cattlemen. Then come back to my place. Help eat that gobbler you just drilled, and while you're there, we'll fix up those cuts. All right, Tom. I'll go with you. On the way, we may be able to find another bird or two. Tom's wife, Mary, accepted the Lone Ranger as a friend on the say-so of her husband, despite the fact that he wore a mask. She prepared a well-cooked meal, which the Lone Ranger thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, oh, I always say Mary's a mighty fine cook. Oh, Tom. And I agree with it. When she gets something to cook. I don't know what we'll do when we run out of things like salt, bacon powder, and flour. I'll see that you get all those things. Oh, but, mister, I... I owe you much more than that. And, uh... I'm going to see if something can't be done about the trouble with the cattlemen. I don't see how they can be won over to accepting us nesters. They have no right to drive us out. The government gave us this land. It's ours to fence and plant and do with what we're pleased. The law says so. The law don't mean much if there's no one to enforce it. But our crops are planted. All the seed we brought from the east is in the ground. We've got to stay here to harvest the crop or we won't have any more seed. I know it. So do Han Bixby and Sam Frawley. But what are we going to do about it? I'll see who it is, Tom. Oh, just a minute, Mary. I'll go into the next room. Oh. It will be just as well if I'm not seen here with this mask. I'll open the door, Mary. You Tom Hanford? Yes. What about it? My name is Belden. I'll step in for a minute. Cattleman? That's right. I run the Box B. Ever heard of it? Reckon most everyone's heard of it. It's the biggest spread around here. It was the best. None better now, is there? Well, maybe not, Hanford. My not outfit's not what it was. Before the best range was cut up into farms, and the best of the water fenced off. I don't aim to argue that point, Belden, because arguing won't get us anywhere. I know you've got plenty of range and water, and that you resent us being here. That you've got all the cattlemen with you. But the law says... Hold on, we... Hanford. Before you start spouting off what the law says, I'm here to tell you the law as we look at it and as we intend to carry it out. Well? You and the rest of the nesters have been warned a dozen times. Maybe you think we don't mean it when we say you've got to clear out. But we do mean it. Where do you expect us to go? Well, that don't concern us. We run the range and we need the range. We intend to keep it for cattle. That's all I've got to say. You're through talking? Yes. Then it's my turn. We're staying here. I see. The government gave us this land. We planted seed, and we're staying to harvest the crops. And the law is on our side, Mr. Belden. We can show you the law. Lady, the law out here is what we make it. There's nothing more to say. I'll tell a few more of you homesteaders what I just told you. We'll give you all fair warning. Next, we'll start shooting. Get out, Hanford, or take what comes. Sounded like the beginning of a range war. Maybe we'd better leave. At least we'll have our lives. No, we're going to stay and fight. At least I am. 
And I'll bet the rest of the homesteaders will feel the same. Are there many homesteaders around here? Yes, but they're spread out. So are the cattlemen. The ranchers control the town. All the townspeople will be on their side if it comes to a showdown. Well, we'd probably be outnumbered. If we could only get a square deal. Maybe you can. <laughs> oh, we can't even buy salt or flour or bacon powder for cash money. How do you expect us to get a square deal for nothing? For nothing, Tom? I wouldn't say that. Well, I... You're going to pay for your square deal by making it possible for other homesteaders to come here and settle. For this whole great country to grow and develop. I'll see you again. I have a saddle that might fit that Indian Mustang you're riding. I haven't far to go. I'll ride bareback until I reach my camp. Thanks, Mrs. Hansard, for a splendid meal. Gosh, Mary. What do you make of him? I don't know, Tom. But somehow I feel he's a mighty good man to have on our side, even though he does hide his face behind a mask. As soon as possible, the Lone Ranger joined his Indian friend Tonto in a well-concealed camp. He told about his adventure of the morning the impending trouble with the Indians, and the threats of the cattlemen. I have an idea. We might be able to do something about it, Tonto. Um, what we do? I'm going to take off my mask and put on a disguise while you go out and scout the Indians. Ah, me watch them. I'm going into town and see what I can learn about the plans of the cattlemen. In town, the Apache Cafe was the scene of an informal meeting of a number of ranchers. Bart Belden of the Box B lifted his glass. Well, boys, here's to getting rid of the nesters without gunplay. I'll drink to that. We'll all drink to that. No one noticed the stranger who sauntered casually into the large room and watched the drinking of the toast. I'd sure hate to shoot men like Hanford or burn down his house. We'd all hate to do it, Bart. But if Tom Hanford and the others won't clear out, we'll just have to get rough. How about it, boy? That's right, Dave. The stranger stood quietly. There was nothing to indicate that he was the lone ranger in disguise. Presently, Bart studied him. Uh, hold on, boys. There's a stranger here. You a rancher, mister? No. Then you must be a nester. He didn't drink with us. I don't drink. Maybe you mean you don't drink with cattlemen. That's not true. So I'm a liar, eh? By Jupiter, did you hear that, boys? Calls me, Dave Sanderson, a liar. Answer me this, mister. Would you use your six guns to drive the nesters out? No. Then you're on the side of the nesters. Boys, I move we make an example of this gent. Let's send him back to his pals on nesters wearing tarn feathers. Sanderson, you're asking for more trouble than you can handle. Is that so? <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Pronto. Hold it. Now watch yourself, Dave. Those guns of his came out fast. Too fast for a nester. He's a gunman hired by the nesters. Either complete your draw or take your hand off your gun. I'll finish my draw. <laughs> Why, you... Gosh! Dave, it looks like the bullet smashed your gun completely. I never saw a drawing and shooting like that in all my life. Hey, look here, stranger. Just who are you? Are you hired by the nesters? No. I'm as much a friend of the cattlemen as the nesters. This country is big enough for both of you. Uh, like fun it is. The rate they're moving in here, they'll soon take the whole of the open range. Yes. Then there'll be enough of them to drive us out. Time might come when you and the homesteaders need each other. Uh, we never needed them. <laughs> never will. What if Indians attack? There are a lot of bad ones around here. Uh, they won't tackle us. They never have. And never will. The nesters have got to go. Now just remember this. If you try to drive them out, they'll fight. Men who are fighting for their homes fight hard. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before we continue with the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a moment.
to continue our story. The ranchers were holding a meeting to make plans for driving out the homesteaders. They didn't know that a stranger in their midst was in reality the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise in place of his familiar mask. Some of the men looked on this stranger with suspicion. Boys, we've got to get down to brass tacks and make plans. Maybe we should get rid of this stranger. His ideas are different from ours. Well, he can hear our plans. If he wants to, he can pass them on to the nesters. Maybe they'll take warning and save themselves a lot of trouble. Now, here's the plan. First, we set fire to their houses, tear up their fences, and ride roughshod over their crops. Don't use guns unless they fire first. If they do, defend yourselves. But get this straight. There's to be no women or children shot. As for the men, shoot for their legs. Is that clear? How soon do we start? Tomorrow morning. All of you bring your men, your guns, and horses, and meet right here in town. Riding hard, the Lone Ranger hurried to the camp where he had left his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. Oh, hold it, hold it, steady, big What happened in town, Kimasabi? Give me a hand, Tonto. Break out the saddlebag and bring out my own clothes. I'll get rid of this disguise. Ah, uh, that trouble? It's going to be a lot of trouble. The ranchers are starting out in the morning. Start out? Do what? They're going to move in on the homesteaders. They'll tear down the fences, set fire to houses, ruin crops. Homesteaders fight? Of course they'll fight. Oh, uh, here. Here, sir. Oh, thanks. They'll open fire, and the ranchers in town will fire back. That will be the beginning of a war that won't end until one side or the other is wiped out. Yeah, come back. Good enough. We have a lot of ground to cover between now and daybreak. Mm -hmm. And what we do? To start with, we've got to call on just as many homesteaders as possible. We've got to warn them, get them together, outline a plan. You've got a plan? I have one, Toto, but it's dangerous. Uh, here, Matt. Thanks. I never try my plan unless I felt certain that there was no other way to prevent war between the farmers and the ranchers. There. I'm ready. First of all, we'll go to Tom Hanford's place. And me go too? Yes, Tonto. We'll start from there. Easy, big foot. One, two, three. Look, mister. Yes. Are you sure those men will go as far as you say? Yes, I am, Tom. I I just can't believe Bart Belden and men like that would stoop to setting fire to houses and destroying crops. I told you just what I heard at the meeting. Of all the low... Oh, Tom, I can't believe men would stoop so low. We're not hurting anyone. All we ask is a chance to live and let live. Mary, the cattlemen feel they're fighting for their rights. They don't want to hurt anyone. But there's no limit to what they'll do to protect the cattle range. Well, if they want to fight, they can have it. We can't beat them, Tom. Maybe we can't, honey. We'll just have to go down trying. We can't give up our farms. There's no place for us to go. Tom, I told you about the Indians north of here. Yes. They make our position more hopeless than ever. Even if we could defeat the cattle, then the Indians would massacre all of us. The sooner the Indians attack, the better. Oh, what do you mean? There's only one reason why they haven't already attacked. Why is that? More Indians are riding into that valley every day. They're waiting until they reach their greatest strength before they ride the warpath. And the longer they put it off, the stronger they'll be. Yes. Tom, I'm going to outline a plan to you. You must keep it to yourself. The other homesteaders mustn't know about it. Well, uh, You've got to trust me. What's your plan? The Indians are going to attack in the morning. The morning? But your friends mustn't know this. But you said the cattlemen would come after us in the morning. The Indians, too. Between now and then, we've got to ride and call on as many homesteaders as we can reach. Tell them to get together here on your farm and be prepared to meet the cattlemen. But the Indians... Say nothing about the Indians. Leave them to me. Tom Hanford, Tonto, and the Lone Ranger rode in three different directions to spread the word about the warning that the cattlemen were planning an attack. Without exception, the homesteaders promised to assemble at daybreak at the Hanford house. Then Tom rode home. But the Lone Ranger's work was just begun. One, two, three. With Tonto at his side, the masked man headed north toward the valley where the Indians were waiting. Dawn lighted the eastern sky as the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly up the hill that bordered the Valley of the Indians. The sound of a ceremonial chant came over the ridge. Tonto, this time I'll make no attempt to approach secretly. Maybe guard near top of hill. There are, we'll capture them. 
The masked man pushed on boldly until he reached the crest. Push a little. Scott, hold on. Sit down, big boy. There they are, Tonto. Ah. Plenty Indian there. But not nearly as many as there'll be in another week or not ten right. days. That's right. They're not nearly as savage now as they would be after going through the war dance ritual. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. Strange. What that? We stand here in plain sight. None of the Indians have noticed us. The last time when I tried to get here secretly, I was discovered without delay. Well, we'll call ourselves the attention of those savages. You open fire? We're going to fire at the ground near the feet of the chief. Here goes. I got their attention. Call to them, Tonto. Tell them their war gods are weak. Pahuma! Kula! Looking up here. Shout again. Pahuma! Kula! Tell them the one who wears a mask defies them. Mekla Kamu! Kushna! Tony Boom! That got them. They're making for their horses. Now there'd be plenty of trouble. I'll give them a few more shots to think about. Indian, come plenty quick. Let them come. They'll not catch me this time. I'm not riding a bareback Mustang. I'm traveling on silver. The angry savages raced to their horses and charged up the hill after the masked man who had assailed them with shouts of defiance and bullets of silver. It was well past daybreak. The sun was rising when the ranchers assembled in town. They were armed and mounted and ready to ride as soon as Mark Belden gave the word. Now, men, I have divided you into groups of five and six. Each group has a name of one of the nesters. Spread out and visit each of those critters and let them know we mean business. Is that clear? Now, remember what we agreed last night. There's to be no women or children shot. You're to defend yourselves and avoid shooting to kill as far as possible. We want to drive the nesters out, not kill them off. Hey, Bart, I hear something. Look over there, it's Redskins. They're coming this way. They're fast. Yeah, they're chasing a couple of men. Yeah, that's right. One of those men is masked. Look at him, travel. Boys, the Indians are headed for town. They're coming right here. Should we open fire? No, wait, hold your fire. Wait till we see if that masked man's got to say. Hold on, hold on, hold Indians are on the warpath. Get ready to fight. You let them here. Look at them. They're spreading out. They're going to surround the town. Not if I can help it. Yeah, that did it. Now the Redskins will open fire. Well, cage yourselves. Get cover. We're outnumbered five to one. Spread the word. Get the talisman to help. They'll still be outnumbered. Stand them off as long as you can. I'll try to get more help. Open fire, boys. Knock them off as fast as you can. Start every gun firing. <laughs> ranchers spread out, taking refuge behind wagons, buildings, and anything else that offered protection. They were joined by the townspeople. Tonto remained to help in the fight, but the Lone Ranger dashed away, leaving the community before the savage Indians could complete the encirclement. Meanwhile, the homesteaders had assembled at Tom Hanford's place. They looked ill at ease and handled their guns and rifles awkwardly. By training, they were ill-equipped as fighting men, but like their forefathers at Concord and at Lexington, they were grimly determined to defend their homes at any cost. Uh, It's this waiting that gets on my nerves. Yeah, the same with me. I wish Tom Hanford would tell us all he knows. You think he knows more than he's told us? I'm sure of it. He's got a look in his eye. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, look, that horseman, look at him ride. Men, get ready for action. Get ready, but hold your fire. Oh, he's missed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the word? The Indians are attacking the town. Every one of you men is needed. This is your chance to drive out the Indians. You hear that, men? Come on. How do we know that the mass man's telling the truth? Take my word for it. Follow me. Get up there. Come on, boys. I'll follow Tom In town, the battle had become grim. The hard-riding Indians drew an ever-smaller circle around the community and the men who defended it. Ranchers and townsmen fought side by side, but all knew that the end was just a matter of time. Look, the fire arrow. They've been holding them till they got close. There'll be more in a few minutes. We're out. Number too heavy. Oh, I wish Save your wishing and keep firing. Dave, Pete, look over there. Horsemen coming. Those aren't soldiers. Who are they? They're firing. Look at that. They're flying on the Redskins. Hey, those are the nesters, the homesteaders. You mean they're coming to help us? That masked man, he's riding in the lead. See him? I'm watching the Redskins. Look at them. Their circle is busted. The Indians wavered before the new attack. Then, as the onrushing homesteaders, led by the Lone Ranger, opened fire, the savages broke and fled. The Redskins are leaving. Look at them. They're turning tail. Oh, 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 oh. 
Get your horses and chase them. Drive them back to the hill. The Indian retreat turned into a flight, and then a mad scramble for safety. Ranchers, townsmen, and homesteaders were united in pursuit. They went after the savages, driving them into the hills and scattering them over a wide area. It was afternoon when the victorious pioneers returned from the chase. Tom Hanford and Bart Belden, leaders of their respective groups, rode side by side over the back trail. Listen, Bart, men behind us sure feel gay. And so do I, Tom. I guess we ranchers have learned a lesson. How's that? Well, the fact that you grow corn instead of cattle doesn't make you different from us. I reckon we're all cut from the same cloth. Well, after all, Bart... You know, I feel pretty ornery about the whole thing. We were all assembled, ready to attack you, Nesters, when the Redskins struck. Then, when you could have thrown in with the Redskins against us, you fought on our side. Pioneers have got to stick together. Uh huh. That's right, Tom. Pioneers have got to stick together. Yep. That's something that I learned from the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.